want you to just raise up. Come on.
We consider ourselves extremely blessed to attend the most exceptional foundation course offered by the church. My wife and I have been avid listeners to a vast array of the most gifted, anointed and scholastically acclaimed teachers over the years, but I've never attended a course as excellent and enjoyable as this. We have witnessed the power of God during the classroom sessions and had a greater impact on the personal walk with the Lord. The classes on financial breakthrough, faith, freedom from sin and healing has given us a complete biblical understanding that it is God's will to heal us as much as it is God's will to forgive sin. We are so thankful to the Lord for allowing us to receive this anointed and powerful teaching which gave us a different perspective. I am David, my wife Shushmita and this is our story of hope. I read this word today morning from Revelation 21 4 it says he will wipe every tear from their eyes and there will be no more death or sorrow or crying or pain you know he has promised that he's gonna take care of us you know, we have such a wonderful name we have such a wonderful God he is Jesus you know all we have to do is declare his name over our lives, over our situations, you know, over our chains, over our bondages. You know, that's all he wants us to do and he's going to take care of the rest. Come on, if you believe it right now, can I encourage each one of you to raise your hands and start speaking to God right now? Surrender your situations right now, come on. surrounding me let it break at your name still we call the sea to still the rage of me to still every way at your name Jesus Jesus you make the darkness tremble Jesus Jesus Silence fear Jesus, Jesus, you make 
make the darkness tremble. Jesus, Jesus, oh, the dream calls his bones to live. Call his lungs to sing once again. Out of praise, breathe. Call his bones to live. Call his lungs to sing once again.
That's what we're going to look at this, this afternoon. We're talking about emotions. Somebody say, feeling emotions. Emotion. Come on, type it in the chat. Come on, say it out louder. Emotion. We're going to look at how to dealing with your feeling. Dealing your feeling. Dealing your feeling. Now, how many of you have experienced feelings right today? Right from the morning, time you woke up in the morning, you experienced different kind of emotions, different kinds of feelings in your life. Come on. How many of you experienced a variety kind of emotions right from the day you started? Yeah? yeah? Joy, happiness, anger, frustration. Probably some of you drove in frustration and anger to church because you got up late and everything went on late. Right? So many emotions, compassion, depression, disappointment, disgust, embarrassment, guilt, happiness, hatred, humiliation, jealousy, so many emotions, right? Someone said like this, that we are millionaires in emotions. Millionaires in emotions, and they come in infinite combinations of type and intensity. No matter how hard we try and to regulate our emotions, they always seem to reflect the delights and the disasters of our life. Right? Desi delight and disasters of our life, okay? Unfortunately, we usually think of our feelings only in negative terms. That's how we get to know them mostly. We are accustomed to, to hearing this phrase called emotional problems. Come on, if you are in the gaming zone, and my son would always, as always say, emotional damage. You hear this phrase is only in the negative way, emotional problems. And sometimes probably we thought we would be better off without emotions. But that's not what the Bible talks about, okay? Emotions are an indispensable part of our lives. They're very important. Something we must learn how to embrace and employ them to be helpful rather than harmful. You know, God's desire is that we live an emotionally healthy life. And the Word of God shows us how to get there. Now, I understand some of us go through some difficult situations because based on a trauma that we have gone through, and some of us have chemical imbalances, and some of us need, because of those things, we need professional help. And by the way, I really like to inform you that as a church, we believe in professional help. Sometimes we need some, somebody to talk to, help talk to us in our lives. And that's why we, have, we partner along with a counseling center called Interblend. And most of our premarital counseling, marital counseling, you need counseling for addictions. There are, we, have, we can put you onto this, part, this firm called Interblend Counseling. They'll give you Christian and good career and counseling in different ways. We believe sometimes you need counseling. Right? So I want to encourage you, make use of the services. You can always reach out to any one of the pastors and we will help you to connect with Interblend. But you sh sometimes you need that. It's nothing wrong to get help. It's not wrong to go to counseling, by the way. I know some of us probably have been brought up with that thought. If you go to premarital counseling, you think nothing is wrong with us. You don't have to go to counseling when everything is wrong. You can go to counseling making it to make sure everything will go right. Right? So we need help sometimes. So sometimes emotionally also we need help. And that's why we need to talk to someone medically, counselor, or, or to go to professional help. Okay? But today I really want to talk about that kind of feelings that we have every day. Right? We struggle with feelings every day on a challenge every day. And most of our feelings every day that come from our reactions to our situations and circumstances. Reactions to the way we are treated by others or because of our wrong thinking. You know, last... We, we saw how our thinking can shape our life. And feelings are the same way. Feelings follow thoughts. Feelings follow thoughts. So we need to be learning to deal with our emotions in a better way so that they can help us. Now when it comes to understanding emotions, there are two opposite extremes. Two opposite extremes. Number one, one extreme is to try to ignore our emotions. Try to ignore our emotions. Now, sometimes, as Christians, we've been brought up saying that, oh, you should not be emotional. You should not be emotional, all right? 
uh, emotions are not something that should be denied or suppressed. How many of you have been gr gr brought up with this thought that as a man, you should always stay strong. As a man, you should not, never cry. Boys, don't cry. And I've even thought that, right? See, we try to ignore our emotions. When a person denies or suppresses their emotions like anger, bitterness, shame, sorrow, these emotions don't disappear, by the way, when you suppress them. But they stay inside of you. They get bottled up inside of you and they simmer on. And there will be a time, a moment, when suddenly they will explode and it will cause harm to everyone around you. So ignoring those emotions is not going to help. Denying those emotions is not going to help. So we need to avoid that extreme where we totally live without our emotions. But the opposite is also equally we should be avoiding. The opposite is to allow our emotions to take charge of our lives. And some of us are like that, like we allow emotions to take charge of our lives. Every decision is an emotional decision. Heard this statement, if you feel good about it, do it. Any area in Allah, feel good about it. Okay, you love food? Yeah, there's good food there, eat it. <laughs> feel good about it, do it. And sometimes it will cause harm to us. Think about this, we live in a culture which is steeped in sexuality, sensuality, and has cut ties with moral absolutes. We feel like it, do it. Or you feel like having sex, go do it, have it. Without knowing the moral obligations, the boundaries of it. And that's dangerous, taking control. Let, your life is driven by emotions. And that's also not right. If you feel tied down, just walk away from every responsibility. That's not right. So trying to understand our emotions and feelings, we need to avoid these two extremes. Right where we, where we ignore our emotions or we totally be controlled by our emotions. That's not how God wants us to live. The Bible talks about having a healthy, emotional, balanced life. God wants us to avoid the extremes. God is never extreme. He wants us to avoid extremes. He wants us to be, have a life which is very emotionally healthy. You know, any Star Trek fans out there? Mr. Spock, right? Captain Kirk, two different personalities. One is emotionless, one is totally driven by emotions. Between these two emotions, God wants us to live a healthy emotional life. Healthy emotional life. For us to understand how can we come to that place where we live a healthy, emotional life, we got to understand emotions first. Now why? Why, are we so, why do we have so many emotions? You know why? Because God is also an emotional God. You got to understand that truth. The emotions that you and I feel are not satanic in any way. Because God created us in his image. And we see in the Bible that God is an emotional God. And time and again, you see God happy. Scriptures talk about it. Say so he rejoices over you with dancing, with singing. And you also find scriptures where God is God, God angry. You look at the life of Jesus, you'll see so many emotions that Jesus expressed during his lifetime. You are in, in John chapter 11, verse 35. It says, Jesus wept. He felt sorrowful. In Mark chapter 3, verse 5, it says like this, He looked around at them in anger and deeply distressed at their stubborn hearts. Anger. Luke chapter 9, verse 41, You unbelieving and perverse generation, Jesus replied, How long shall I stay with you and put up with you? Frustrated. Frustration. Luke chapter 7, verse 9. When Jesus heard this, he was amazed at him. And turning to the crowd following him, he said, I tell you, I have not found such great faith in Israel. He was amazed. Hebrews chapter 12, verse 2 says, 
fixing our eyes on Jesus, the pioneer and perfecter of our faith. For the joy set before him, he endured the cross. You see Jesus displaying so many emotions during his lifetime. Why? Because God is an emotional God. He is expressing emotions. He expresses emotions. And the Bible clearly says that we are all made in the image of God. Right? When God created, he created us in his image. So if, if you and I are made in his image, then we got to understand that we are very well emotional people. God designed us to express emotions. God's desire is that we express emotions because we will be only complete when we are able to express our emotions. Avoiding emotions, bottling them is not going to help. Ignoring is not going to help. So we are created by God. That's why when we come to worship God, we encourage people to express emotions because God wants you to express his emotions. God wants you to feel it. Feel it. If we deny our emotions, then we won't know what to do when God expresses his emotions. So we got to understand God is an emotional God and he made us to be emotional people. God created us with emotions so that our lives might be enriched. Our lives might be enriched. God could have created us without emotions. Imagine that. He could have created us without emotions. We would be like robots. Devoid of any feelings. But imagine how life would be, how dull life would be without any emotions. You don't feel joy. You don't feel happy. In there you feel sorrow, nor pain. We will not be able to enjoy the laughter of kids, the joy of kids being raised up. We won't be able to enjoy the warmth of a lover, someone we love very much. God did not create it us to be robots. He created us to be people who will be emotional, who can express emotions. See, God's desire is that we live a complete life. In every area of our life, you see our emotions are all connected, not only to our physical being, our mental being, everything is connected to our spirit, soul, and body. With our bodies, we relate, relate to spiritual, physical environment. With our spirits, we relate to spiritual environment, fellowship with God. And with our emotions, we are relating to others. And we can't easily separate between the physical, spiritual, and emotional aspects of our, our being. Our emotions can be affected by our relationship with God and by our, and our relationship with others. Physical illness affects our emotional equilibrium. So we need to understand that God designed us to be emotional people. Right? He wants us to be people who express emotion. So while emotions may be a divine gift, how we manage them determines whether or not they'll become a blessing or a curse. How we manage them. By the way, God can manage them very beautifully. And sometimes that's where we struggle. We don't know how to manage them well. And that can either lead you to blessing or curse. So today we want to look at how we can really manage our emotions. Why should we manage our emotions? Very important to manage our emotions. We need to be managing our emotions because all our feelings are unreliable. Feelings are always unreliable. They can even lie to us. Have you ever experienced this? You are with a group of people and nobody's talking to you and everybody's talking among themselves and looking at you. What do you feel? You feel everybody's talking about you. Probably they might not actually. But you feel it. Sitting in a crowd. And everyone's not talking, but everyone's looking at you and talking and saying, okay, everybody's talking about me. It's a lie. Yeah? If you feel you're misunderstood, unappreciated, or mistreated, sometimes it might not be the true. That's how you feel. And every feeling that you have is not true, by the way. They are unreliable. They can lead you in the wrong direction. How many times have you thought, I know this is the right thing to do. I just feel it in my gut. And you did it, and everything collapsed. Feelings can lie. 
Proverbs chapter 14 verse 12 says, there is a way that appears to be right, but in the end it leads to death. Feelings are unreliable. Last week looked about, we don't have to believe everything that you, that you think. And you don't have to ex- accept everything that you feel. Because feelings can lie to us. Sometimes some of the things that you feel are not truths about yourself or the other person or other people. Feelings, unreliable. And left unchecked, unrestrained, this can lead you in the wrong direction. So that's why we should be able to learn to manage our feelings. Feelings can also manipulate. Manipulated. That's why we need to be managing our feelings because we don't want to be manipulated. Feelings can influence you to do something that you shouldn't do. If you don't control your emotions, they will control you and you will be manipulated by the moods. If you're always guided by your feelings rather than by what is right or by your commitment or by the truth, you won't live a good life. If you're always guided by feelings, people might take advantage of you. We all been victims of that. Anyone seen a television commercial? So many times you see a commercial, what are they trying to do? The color of it, the way they talk, the music that comes on a commercial. Everything is looking so good and it is so attractive and it speaks to your emotions, to your feeling and you succumb to that and you went and bought something that you shouldn't have bought in the first place. You don't even, you don't even need it but just because you like the commercial so much that you are influenced by the commercial so much you went and bought it. I did that so many times. <laughs> right? Sometimes feelings can be manipulative. Well, that's what sellers do. That's what the advertisers do. They manipulate your feelings. They manipulate your emotional being and, and push you to buy things that you don't really need it. And then you realize, why do I need this one? Why, don't, why did I even buy this? Impulse buying. We need to be having self-control. If you don't know how to manage your emotions, you will, you will bring yourself to ruin. And Satan's favorite tool in your life is all negative emotions. He will use fear to whip you around. He'll use resentment, jealousy, worry, envy to bully you around, bring you down in your life. And if you don't know how to manage your emotions, you'll be helpless against him. And he's going to manipulate your feelings. That's why we should be able to manage our feelings. Another reason why you should manage our feelings is because we want to be people who are pleasing to God. And there is always a fight that goes on right there, trying to please God. We need to control our emotions because we want to please God. They are unreliable. They can be manipulative. And God cannot be God in our lives if emotions are God in our lives. God can't rule my life. Emotions rule my life. In Romans, time and again, Paul talks about to be controlled by human nature results in death. Spirit results, controlled by the spirit results in life and peace. And that requires discipline. Discipline in our prayer life. Imagine that if you only pray when you feel like praying. Is it going to help you to have a better spiritual life? No. Imagine this, if you only come to church... If you feel like coming to church, probably if you feel like coming to church on a Wednesday and you come here, there's nobody here. Feelings help us to please God. If our prayer life, so many times our prayer life is affected by feeling, oh, I don't feel like it, that's why I don't pray. Instead of going there by feeling, praying by commitment, praying by desire, that will help us to have a good life. How many times people have failed because they could not control their emotions. That's why we should learn to manage our emotions. Because they will help us to be successful in life. I need to manage my feelings because I want to succeed in life. Study after study has revealed that your EQ is more important than your IQ. An emotional quotient is also very important. 
than your intelligent quotient. People who are not intelligent and who, uh, people who know how to manage their emotions well, they, they can make big in life. You see, your emotional well-being is important in how you can be successful in life. If there is no control of our emotions, we're going to bring ruin to your life. Time and again, the Bible talks about it. Proverbs chapter 5, verse 23 says like this. He will die for lack of self-control. He will be lost because of his great foolishness. How many people do you know who ruined their reputation because of their lack of self-control? How many people lost a job opportunity because of something that happened at a party? All colleagues gang up together, something happens at a party, next day you're fired out of your job. Not able to control yourself. That's why it's important to manage our feelings, my friends, because they are always not the right thing. They always don't bring out the truth. They're always manipulating us. And in order for us to live an emotionally healthy life, we need to be able to know how to deal with the way we feel. So how do we do that? How do we come to a place where we can know better, live a better life, better emotional life, if we don't know how to deal with them? And we got to look into the Word of God, how we can deal with our feelings. Okay? Dealing your feeling. How do we deal with this? Number one, you got to name your feeling. Name it. The first thing you have to do in dealing with an emotion is to name it or identify it. What is it that you're actually feeling? I got to identify it. I got to be specific. I got to pinpoint exactly what I'm feeling. You can only manage or change things that you can identify. You cannot manage things that are vague. Imagine this, washing a dirty car and making it look nice and clean is not going to make the car run if it is out of fuel. Right? What is the real problem? Got to get into that. And feelings can be confusing so many times. You know, the Bible talks about feelings which are confusing. David talks about feelings uh, confusing. Oh, the whole book of Psalms, you can find right there in the book of Psalms, there are so many feelings that David expresses. And he gets those feelings, he identifies those feelings, and he prays, talks to God about his feelings. So if you can't name it, you can't change it. So in order to be emotionally strong, we need to be able to identify. We got to ask this question, what am I really feeling? That's the question we need to ask. What am I feeling? What, are, what am I really feeling? You need to go beneath the surface. You need to go dig deeper and to find out exactly why you are feeling the way you are feeling. Sometimes what you feel on the surface is tied up to something deep inside. And what you feel on the surface is, a, is something that came about. But there's a deep inside that you need to look into that. If you're feeling discouraged, Depressed, why? Why do you feel like that? You should go to the problem. Is it because someone said something to you? Someone said something to you. Or you've been fired at your job. An expectation didn't happen the way you expected it to happen. You need to look and find the cause of that feeling. Anger. Sometimes it just can be a repressed anger that just comes out. You don't feel anger in that moment, but something happens and you, it comes out. So the second question that you always need to ask is, what is the trigger point? What are my triggers? Why do I feel like this? And what causes me to feel like this? What is the trigger? Go dig deeper. Trigger can be so many things. A sight can be, you see something, something triggers off inside of you. You smell something, something triggers off inside of you. What the sound of something triggers off something. Taste, touch, all this can be trigger points. If you can't talk about it, my friends, it means it's out of control. If you can't talk about fear or angry, it's out of control. And if you're afraid to talk about it, it's out of control. And then it's actually in talking about it, it's actually in identifying it will help you to gain control of that feeling. When you follow, when you allow, your feelings to be bottled up, your stomach is going to get sore, by the way. You'll feel it. 
So identify it. Identify the problem. Go to the root to see what is triggering that one. Identify it. Second one, you can challenge what you're feeling, by the way. Even as you look at it, you just don't have to take everything, every thought that comes across your mind. You can also don't have to receive every thought, every feeling that comes on your way. You can challenge what you feel. Are really things really as bad as I feel they are? As I said, David, who wrote many of the Psalms, often asks God to challenge his feelings. Why? Because God understands us. God understands our emotions better than we understand ourselves. David asks God to challenge his emotions. In Psalm chapter 26, verse 2, he asks God, say, Test me, Lord. Try me. Examine my heart and my mind. He said, examine my heart and my mind. Test me. Whenever he was feeling low, he goes to God and says, Lord, test me. Why am I feeling like this? He asks God to challenge his emotions and feelings. Because he knew God can help him to evaluate it well. Because he knows you better than anybody else. So you got to challenge it. Ask God to help you to challenge it. Sometimes it's good, always good to also have a friend who can challenge your feelings. Friend, that's why sometimes it's good to have a part of a small group. A small group of close friends. Because sometimes when you're in a group of close friends, a friend can challenge you. A friend can identify things that you do without you knowing it. And they'll come and question, hey, I'd never seen you do this. I don't think, normally you don't behave like this. Why are you behaving like this? Your friends can challenge you. If you have good friends, if you give them permission to talk, you, uh, talk into your lives, they can come and challenge you and say, hey, why are you doing the way you are doing? Why are you feeling the way you are doing that? The ability to give your friend the ability to challenge something. Now, Job had a friend when he was going through depression because of his circumstances or what is happening. And Job had a friend who challenged his thinking, who challenged his emotions and feeling. His name was Eliphaz. And he, he challenges him. In Job chapter 15, verse 12, he says, Why has your heart carried you away? And why do your eyes flash? He said, What has made you to go in this direction? You've got to challenge it, my friends. Don't have to take every feeling that comes your way. You can challenge it. You can question it. If it is right, question your feelings. What I'm feeling right now is true or not? You've you got to question yourself. What, am I, what I'm feeling right now, is it going to help me or is it going to hurt me? Is it going to help me? If I go along this route, is it going to help me or is it going to hurt me? That's one of the simplest ways that we can identify and challenge our feelings. How many of you have experienced this? You went to a restaurant, sat down and ordered your food, and it took a while to get your food. And then someone else comes after you. They sit down and they order food and they get food before you get your food. Yes. Anyone in that place? Yes. How did you feel? Frustrated? Yes. Angry? Yes. And what do you do? You call this guy, supervisor, come here. Where is my food? Yes. I've been sitting here for so long. Right? Irritated. But if that feeling... Is it going to help you or is it going to hurt you? Have you ever thought about that? Would you get better service if you, by getting angry? Would you get better service if you get angry? Think about that. It feels good to get angry, but is it going to be helpful? You got to decide on that. Challenge it. In a family, if you want your husband or your wife to change or your kids to change and you keep on nagging, nagging will never help to change any person, by the way. Challenge it. If you feel like nagging, challenge it. If you're frustrated in this 
with the people in, around your life, expressing them, anger at them is not going to help. So you've got to challenge your emotions and change them and go for the better. The third thing that we can do, once we identify it, name it, and then we begin to challenge them, we've got to change it or we've got to tame that feeling. You can tame your feeling. Sometimes you just need to change the way you feel. You know, the Bible talks about Jesus. And it, Philippians talks about ha ha us having the same attitude as Jesus. Imagine, in that restaurant, what would Je have Jesus done? What would have Jesus done? Would he shout at the waiter? Think about that. You can change your feeling right there. When you identify it and when you challenge it, and you can change it. It's okay. If Jesus would have been, what would Jesus do? Maybe he would be calm. Maybe that person was going through a terrible day. And you know, sometimes, you know, waiters drop something and you get angry. But that guy must be, having, it might be the first day at his work or he, something is going on in his life and he's not able to do his work well. You identify, challenge it and you can change it. So think, what, what would Jesus do in that place? Your attitude should be the same as that of Jesus. Sometimes, in order to change it, you need to channel it. Channel your feeling. Channel your emotion. Let's say you've been the victim of injustice. Injustice at work because of your, either of your gender or because of the way your life is, because of your upbringing. There's prejudice. You experience unfairness in your office, in your school, in your college, or whatever. And that, can, that emotion, those feelings can bring anger inside of you. And that's a great legitimate response. But is my anger going to get me what I want? But you can channel that anger in the, in the right way. You know, when you take a negative emotion like anger, and when you use anger for your own benefit, that's selfish anger. You know, by the way, you know, God made us to be angry. God put that emotion in us. He put anger in us, by the way. It's not, okay? But the way we handle anger is all going to make a lot of difference. Bible clearly says, in your anger, do not sin. Do not sin. It says you can get angry, but your anger should lead to righteousness, not to sin. And sometimes when we look at the injustice that's been done, we get angry, we get frustrated. So sometimes in our frustration and anger, we can beat up people. We can beat up things. We can cook up evil schemes. But that's not right. That's not bringing to righteousness. It says, in your anger, do not sin. So how do we handle that? Channel it. So when you feel injustice happening, be a champion of justice. Be a champion of justice in that place. Bring it to the light. Talk about it to people. Talk about it to authorities. Be a champion. Channel your anger so it can be beneficial to others. You know, Rick Warren talks about it. He lost his son. When he lost his son, they said they were very depressed. They lost his, they prayed for him. He, they lost his son. They were very depressed. And he says like this, I didn't allow that feeling to take control over my life. So instead of allowing it to take control of me, he said, I wanted to channel it properly. So he begins to channel it and says, I began to help people who are facing the same thing. His son died of clinical depression. He, and he says, okay, I'm going through this pain. I'm going through this feeling. I'm not going to allow it to control my life. And he says, I'm going to channel it well. So he begins to talk to people who are going through clinical depression. Talk to parents who are suffering with their, or kids are suffering that. And he began to give them hope. He began to give them direction, how they can handle it. You can channel your feeling in the right way to change it. You tame it, tame it, challenge it, and channel it very well. You know, we talk about it. The only way we can live an emotionally healthy life is when we allow God to work in our lives. We think we can do it in our own strength. If we think we can do it in our strength, we will fail. You know, Zephaniah chapter 4, verse 6 says like this. This is the way we're going to deal with it. He said, not by might, 
not by power, but by my spirit, says the Lord. You want to overcome these emotions, these runaway emotions. We need to be people who will be full of the spirit of God. Full of the spirit of God. That's why Paul says in Romans, if you follow the way, the desires of your flesh, you will reap those kind of benefits. But if you follow the desires of the spirit, you will reap the, that kind of a spirit. So every day, you and I need to come to God and say, God, help me. I don't understand my feelings. I don't know how to navigate my feelings. I don't, understand, I don't know how to deal with them. So Holy Spirit, help me to do this. It's not by our willpower, my friends. We need to have the power of the Holy Spirit working in our lives. Every single day, ask God to help you to deal with your emotions. And when you allow the Spirit of God to work in your life, when you allow the Spirit of God to lead you in your life, He's going to produce some good, if good emotions in your life. The Bible talks some of them as a fruit of the Spirit. In Galatians chapter 5, verses 22, it says like this, but the Holy Spirit produces this kind of fruit in our lives. Think about these kind of emotions. Love, joy, peace. That's enough for our lives, by the way. If you have love, joy, peace, so many people are without love, joy, and peace in their lives. Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. You know, self-control is not by our willpower. Self-control is only a gift of fruit of the Holy Spirit. So if we allow the Spirit of God to work in our lives, that's when we will learn to be under, manage our emotions well. Spirit of God is there. Then the word of God is there for us. Every time you feel a negative emotion, you speak the word of God. You remember the word of God. You meditate on the word of God. The Bible says the word of God will help you to transform our lives by the renewing of our mind. You fill yourself with the word of God. You speak the word of God when you don't understand your feelings, when you identify your feelings, when you challenge your feelings, and you replace those feelings with the spirit of God and with the word of God. Proverbs chapter 13, verse 3 says like this, those who guard their lips preserve their lives. Those who speak rashly will come to ruin. Be careful of what you say. Psalm 119, verse 11 says, I have hidden your word in my heart that I might not sin against you. Amen. It's important, my friends, to learn to manage our feelings, to deal with our feelings. I love the word of God and the spirit of God to work in our lives. Work in our lives. When you ask God to fill you with the Spirit, He'll fill you with His Spirit that will help you to produce emotions that are going to help you and to turn away from emotions that are not going to help you. I know we all struggle with emotions and we all need the help of God today. In our lives, we need the help. Without His help, we won't be able to know how to deal with our emotions and live an emotionally healthy life. God's desire is, my friends, that we all live an emotionally healthy life. Maybe you are right there at the moment. You feel emotionally drained, emotionally battered today. I want to offer, I want to offer hope to you. God, God's offering hope to you today. You feel that I am there to help you out. In Psalm 34, verse 17, I just want to give these scriptures so that you can have hope in your situation. Psalm 34, verse 17 says, Is anyone crying for help? God is listening, ready to rescue you. It says, If your heart is broken, you'll find God right there. If you're kicked in the gut, he'll help you catch your breath. And goes on to disciples so often get into trouble. Right? Disciples, us, get into trouble. Still, God is there every time. He's there with you right now. In your feeling right now, you feel broken. Somebody hurt you. God says, I'm there with you right there. You, got, you can challenge that feeling. Psalm 73, verse 21 to 24 says like this. It says, when I, beleaguered, when I was beleaguered and bitter, totally consumed by envy, I was totally ignorant, a dumb box in your very presence. I'm still in your presence. It says, I'm still in your presence, but you've taken my hand. You wisely and tenderly lead me, and then you bless me. Amen. Amen. It's right here to help us, my friends. He wants us to have an emotionally healthy life. And the only way we can come to that place is that if we allow him to work in our lives. Allow his spirit to work in our lives. Allow his word to work in our lives. Maybe you feel that way today. Feeling broken, depressed, discouraged, downhearted. I want you to know God is right there with you in that situation. And he wants to help you if you open your hearts to him. If you allow him to work in your lives. 
Amen. Let's close our eyes. And let the Holy Spirit of God speak to you today. Let the Spirit of God speak to you today. You let your emotions rule you so many times in your lives. God says that's not the way you're going to lead, lead your life. Holy Spirit, God, speak to us today. Help us, Lord, to know and understand how we can deal them better. And maybe you're here for the very first time or maybe you're here today. You always grew up with this feeling that nobody loves you. Nobody cares for you. You grew up with that feeling. And you let that feeling dominate your life and let that feeling lead your life. I want to tell you that feeling is not right. Because there's someone who loves you more than your brother, more than your mother, more than your father, more than your friend. There's someone who loves you all the time. Irrespective of where you are, irrespective of what situation you are in, today he's calling out to you. And his name is Jesus. He says, I am loving you. I've loved you so much that I gave my very own life so that I can set you free. So today, he says, he wants to come into your life. He wants to help you to experience his love. So if there is anybody in this congregation today never received Jesus into their lives as their Lord and Savior, all you have to do is ask him to come into your life. Ask him to come and be the Lord of your life. And then he will work in your life. And then he will help you in dealing with your life in a better way. So if there is anybody in this congregation who says, I want to receive Jesus as my Lord and Savior. Can I ask you, can I request you to please lift up your hands wherever. Every eye closed. No, nobody's going to look around here. If you want to receive Jesus into your life as your Lord and Savior, just lift up your hands wherever you are. Anyone out there? Anywhere? Just lift up your hands high. No, no, don't have to feel shy about it. It's not about me. It's about between you and God. Just lift it up high. God wants to help you out today. Don't go with, or out of this place without receiving a touch from God. Anyone out there? Come on, just lift your hands wherever you are. Thank you. I see those hands there. Anyone else before I pray? Now, if for everyone who lifted their hands, I want to lead you in a simple prayer of faith. Nothing magical about it. It's a simple prayer of faith asking Jesus to come into your life. And at Hope Unlimited Church, we believe in the family praying together. So come on, family, let's pray along with who, who have lifted their hands and they want to pray this prayer out aloud. Come on, let's pray this together. Heavenly Father, I thank you for sending your son Jesus to die for me on the cross of Calvary. Jesus, I ask you to forgive all my sins and cleanse me with your precious blood. I believe in you with all my heart and confess you with my mouth that you are Lord. Come live inside of me by the power of your Holy Spirit. Lord, I just pray for everybody who's making that prayer for the very first time. I just pray, Spirit of God, that you'll bring greater understanding and revelation in their lives, O oh God. And I, we seal their decision by your Holy Spirit and the devil will not rob the joy of their salvation in any way. We thank you, Lord, for that. Come on, let's all stand up in closing. And I was, just want us to lift our hands in an act of surrender. I know we do that every Sunday, but, you know, we struggle with emotions. We, sometimes we really don't know. We get carried away by them. But we got realized today that the Spirit of God is there to help us to live an emotional, healthy life. So you struggling in that area, you need God to touch you, you know, the Spirit of God to touch you, just lift up your hands. Come on, as a sign of sudden, I say, God, here am I. I need your help. I need help in that area. I need help. So Holy Spirit, I just lift my hands onto you, God. As an act of surrender, oh God, asking you, Lord, come, help me. Holy Spirit, help us. Holy Spirit, God, help us, oh God, to live an emotionally healthy life, God. Help us not to be people who will be carried away by our emotions. But I pray, God, that we will be able to learn, identify, challenge, and change our emotions, oh God, so that it can be helpful to us and helpful to people around us, oh God. So Holy Spirit, we ask you to come and touch us in a fresh way today, God. We need you, Holy Spirit, God. 
Lord, I just pray for everybody today who are feeling depressed, who are feeling discouraged, who are disappointed. Lord, who are feeling angry, frustrated. In any feelings, oh God, I pray, Holy Spirit, God, that we take authority over those feelings right now in Jesus' name and we speak to those feelings. You are not from, you are not helping them in any way. So get out of their lives in Jesus' name. We speak to those feelings in the name of Jesus. You have no power, no control over their lives. And we replace you with the word of God, with the spirit of God, with the word of God says that we are loved by you, God. With the word of God says we are touched by your presence, oh God. So I pray, Lord, that your spirit and your word will become reality in each one of our lives, oh God. And even as we navigate our lives, I pray we will live an emotionally healthy life, oh God. We thank you, Lord, for that today. We thank you, God, for that today. We give you all glory and honor today. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen and amen. If you made that prayer to receive Jesus, uh, can I request you to go down to our prayer room, which is downstairs. Our friends will be waiting there to help you out in the decision. If you need prayer for any other needs you have, you can always visit our prayer room. If you're visiting us for the very first time, right outside this building, there's Welcome Lounge. Please go there and you can give that card over there and one of our team members will be waiting to help you out with that process too. Other than that, church, have a great week. Live an emotionally healthy life. Identify it, challenge it, and change it in Jesus' name.